Welcome to explainer.com. Um, this session is called the Keys to Calculus, an overview of questions 6, 7 and 8 of the Ordinary Level Maths Paper 1 from the Leaving Cert. What's this video about? I'm going to explain why doing the three calculus, calculus questions in Paper 1 makes a lot of sense. For three questions, half those required, you'll have one hour at least. I'm going to explain this and go through the 2008 questions, six, numbers 6 to 8 in 10 minutes. What's up with those two questions? You probably know that you have to answer six questions out of eight in paper one, but the last three, six to eight, all involve differential calculus. So you have to do at least one calculus question, whatever other choices you make. So if you learn, if you have to learn differential calculus, it seems more effective not to just do one only, but do all three of these questions. Why the differential calculus? It's the type of calculus used in these questions. To produce it, you differentiate with respect to the independent variable, often x, but also t, and what you get is the derivative. The notation is as shown, and when you differentiate, the derivative is called f prime of x. Okay, so what are these keys as you call them? There's really only five things you need to know by heart for all of calculus, and that's pretty good going for half the marks from paper one, don't you think? Differentiation from first principles, single term differentiation, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Only five things for three questions? That sounds too good to be true. Yes, you're right. In truth, these questions require that you also know how to get values from and draw functions, and can do algebra on them. So much more than, than differentiation is thrown in. But you can't ignore differentiation from all of them, like you can with other questions. So what's differentiation again? It takes functions and modifies them to reflect their rate of change. The rate of change will often not be uniform, so you need to plug in a value of x to find out what the rate of change is at that point. Often, but not always, you can call this the speed of the function at a certain point. In fact, this also happens to be the slope of the line which makes a tangent to the function at that point. OK, let's look in more detail at those five keys. Differentiation from first principles. This is also known as the slow way to differentiate. That's the equation as shown. What you do is you substitute x plus h in the formula, subtract the formula itself from it, and put it over h. Then you take the limit uh, as h tends to zero, and you get your answer. It should turn out to be the single term differentiation as explained next. Single term differentiation. What you get is x to the power of n. You differentiate that, you multiply the power by x, so you get n times x, and then you subtract one from the power, so you get n times x to the power of n minus one. The product rule. For functions where two terms are multiplied with each other, you can separate them out and give them names, say f of x and g of x, so that the expression as shown is the product rule. Okay, so you differentiate the first function f of x, multiply it by g of x undifferentiated, and then add it to g, g of x differentiated, multiplied by f of x undifferentiated. The quotient rule is sort of similar, but what you get is f of x as the numerator and g of x as the denominator. The, the formula is a bit more complicated there. There's a, a, a negative sign, there's a subtraction on the numerator, and the g of x gets squared at the bottom. Last but not least is the chain rule. When you see a function inside another function, you can call it f of x, which gets acted upon by a g of x, so that the equation as shown is the formula for the chain rule. So you differentiate g with respect to f to with respect to f of x, and then you multiply it by f differentiated with respect to x. Before looking at the three questions, let's just revise what a function is. It's a calculation that uses an input number you give it to produce output numbers. x usually represents the inputs, and f of x or g of x represents the outputs. You substitute a number for x, and you do calculations according, according to the formula you get for f of x. Functions react to a number you give them with another number. If you give them lots of input numbers, then you can see how they behave over a range. When you picture functions on a graph, you call them curves. There's a very wide area, a very wide family of curves. Let's look at one, the cubic, where the highest term is x to the power of three, and you see that it pretty much looks like a camel's back. Okay, as a top hump and then a lower hump. On to the questions. Okay, hold on tight as we go through the three questions from 2008. Now I'll answer most of them, but there but there will be some that I'll only give clues to or some brief di uh, directions. Questions six to eight from other years are similar in nature but there are differences in the details. Okay, question six. The first question was a uh, simple um, two, 2x minus five equals, uh, equals 19. You should get x equal to seven there. The second one was, uh, was a, a single term, sorry, it's a, a first principles differentiation. So you have, to, you have to substitute x plus h as, as x in there and taking the limit, you should get six x as the answer. And then the, the, the third part of this question was clearly a quotient rule because we have a, a numerator function and a denominator function. And there's a second part to that section 
where we ha were told that the curve y equal f of x at the point zero zero makes a ta uh, an angle of 135 degrees with the positive sense of the x-axis. Okay, well you plug in zero zero into the derivative that you just calculated and see if it equals tan uh, 135 de uh, degrees, which happens to be minus one. Question seven. Again, you're asked to differentiate x to the power of 7 and then 5x minus 3 times x to the power of 4. These are single term differentiations and the answers are fairly straightforward. The next part was multiplying two functions in brackets and you can uh, apply the product rule there or you can expand them out and treat them as single term differentiations. You'll get the same answer. Then second part of part b where you're given a function to the power of 8. Okay, well that's complicated enough to need the chain rule. So you let g equal f to the power of 8 and treat it separately from f of x, which is the, the term inside the brackets. Part c, a distress fare is tested by firing it vertically upward from the top of a tower. The height, h, is equal to 20 plus 90 times t minus 5 t to the power of 2, uh, where t is time. Find uh, okay, it's designed to explode at seven seconds after firing. Now, this is a real-life uh, situation question which appears every year. Uh, there's always differences. The most important thing is the formula. Now, you don't get those in real life, but certainly in the exam you will, and that's the thing to hold on to. Okay, find the height height at, uh, above ground at which it explodes. Well, uh, at t uh, equal to seven, that's when it explodes, so you calculate h for that, and you get 405 meters. Find the speed of the flare at the instant it explodes. Well, speed means differentiation, so you have to differentiate, and you should get 90 minus 10 to the, uh, multiplied by t. And for t equal to 7, that equals 20 meters per second. If the flare failed to explode, find the greatest height above the ground that it would reach before falling back down. Okay, well, that's a maximum. You have to set the derivative to 0. You should find that t equals 9 in that case, and then you get h equals 425 meters. Okay, now question 8. Question 8 was in fact you were given a cubic function, which you've already seen the shape of already, and there are six parts to it. The first part, you just have to let x equal 1 and let x, uh, x also equal 5, and see what the, the values you get from it. Then you have to d uh, differentiate it. And then the, the third part is the biggest part, find the coordinates of the local maximum point and the local minimum point. Well, what you do is you get the derivative and you set it to 0, and you solve it, you should get 2 and 4 to be the answer. You plug 2 and 4 into the main equation and you get 2 and minus 2 out of there. But what is the which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum? Well, the one with the highest uh, f of x value, the first one, must be the maximum. And the other one w with f of x equal to minus 2 is the minimum. Now draw the graph of the function f of x in the domain 1 to 5. Well, you've already worked out uh, some values of f of x for that range, and then you know that it, it, then you know what the shape is like, so you can draw it quite easily. And then to find when the derivative is less than 0, well, that's when it's going downwards, and you should find that that happens between 2 and 4. The final part is that you're told that there's a line that's a tangent to that curve. Okay, well, you have to let that, uh, the, the derivative of the curve equal the slope. Now, the slope, as you can sh see, should be minus 3, and the, the value that you get, you, you get a, a quadratic, and you find the solution to that is x equals the 3. Uh, when you put that back into the equation, you get 0. So you set y equal to 0 and x equal to 3, and you get c equal to 9. Okay, well, that was a lightning fast through run through of the questions. Probably it was too fast. Please ask some questions in the comment section, and I'll be sure to answer you because questions 6 to 8 on paper 1 are a good bet. Thanks for your attention.